double experiment today, boys. Lockdown special. I've got to try and boil some trout pellets. Now I've made trout pellet paste years ago in my early 20s and used to uh, boil it up and, well, scald it. Scald it is a word. There's a film up, I think, on our site. I'll have to dig out the old clips if I still got it. Um, and the other thing I want to do is try and make some teaspoon leads. Now, we have a film up whereby I put some seashells and made some really unusual little lead weights out of them, you know, for flat fishing, for place fishing. And, but it's really cold. I've got here my lead melting kit and I've got here my fish guts boiling up kit. Now, you might think Graham's all wrapped up because it's cold and he's putting it on a bit. Um, I can assure you it, the ground is permafrost and I've no idea how I'm going to get the two saucepans apart. <laughs> Say I like concrete glued together. So I guess I've got to get that fired up and melt those out of there before I even try this experiment. So let's get the cooker out. I'm using the boat cooker just here. The old boat cooker there. Be nice if I could get under boat, but it ain't happening, boys. Of course, if you live on the sea, one mile from the legal limit or whatever you're allowed to go out and do, you can go, I guess you can go out in a boat, but I'm not personally willing to risk it. I don't want to get COVID and I don't want to get a chunky, great big 200 pound fine arguing with somebody, an officer of the law. And of course, it's not just me, there's some right touchy people out there, you know, I've found, with this, with this corona thing on. Some, pe some people just look at you really peculiar. They almost run across the other side of the road. Right, gas bottle. I'll tell you what else I've done, tip boys. I don't have a water separator on my, uh, linked to my engine, but they tell me if you have fuel in for a length of time, you get water in it, just some condensation or whatever, you know, expansion, contraction, it makes moisture. That can get in, if it gets in your engine, it can really screw it. So it's either a water separator, which I haven't got, or get my daughter's car and I top it up with the fuel so the fuel's gone. I would put it in my mower, my strimmer, use it. Don't leave it for like a year and then put it in your outboard engine. Not good. Don't get me wrong, it will work, it probably will work. But a bit risky. Let's get this kitty rigged up. I'm using this camera, boys, because it's really windy. It's supposed to be a lockdown. Piles of traffic going past on the M974 that goes past in Aberdeenshire here. I've tidied the whole garage up. I know where all my tools are now. I've got through so much wood building stuff for Mike's big channel TA Outdoors. I've got a bit left over. I've got some paints I've got to go through. Most of them are left over. I'm going to paint the floor. All solvents, cleaners, oils. Stove axe, so I just stuff, boat cleaning stuff, the cleaning, 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 all the stuff for probably teak oil, linseed oil, stuff that we use, and of course stains and paints for the various properties. Over here, bait corner. No, not round up. I keep my bait in these containers, they're pretty good, keeps them dry. Tin stuff, hopefully this gets used on the barbel. <clears throat> here we go. A bag of trout pellets. Now I say I have made paste, I have never boiled it and seen what oil comes out of it. We're going to give it a go. Right, I've got some sheet lead that I'm just slipping up so it fits in the pan. I'm not going to need much. I'm only going to try three or four. I'm going to be trying to make a lead as we used to old school years and years ago in yeah, just a spoon, a nice spoon shaped lead. Very similar to the shell ones, but it's going to come out a lot more even, I hope. A little piece of wire in there, but of course, when I rest it down, it's going to tip back like that and the lead runs out. So what I'm going to do is this. There's the lead. I've got a piece of board. I've got there a countersink. I'm going to countersink and grind out about four holes along here. Put the spoons in just to balance them. And then just rest a piece of wood under the back there like that, you see. Just like this. I've got one, two, three, four. And try a couple of different moulds there. So first let's get this lead on the go. I normally find with the uh, lead it's better to get a, a good bit going rather than a little bit and you have to start 
heating up again and it's very very it's freezing today well look that's on the gas and and, and it's barely oh, i think it's just coming free look oh look <laughs> oh no how much ice is in there look <laughs> five inches of ice and of course that's going to expand i would imagine and and come over and rust my gas cooker out see now that has actually made molten lead already so i'm going to put a little bit more in there because i find the molten lead actually helps the other lead to melt and what i do is i put my spare one on top to shut the heat down in the cold weather so i can just lift it out just leave a little bit of air listen Gary's door is open, oh, let's go through all that. Uh, gloves, uh, safety glasses, breathing apparatus, all the stuff they help for safety people like. Um, what can I say? Uh, pliers, nothing, nothing the most important thing, really, of any description that you put your mould in down here of water. Okay, fine. As soon as this is melting, I'll get rid of it. I can't believe how thick that ice is. That's got to be four, four inches. And no doubt if that had been all water, it would have been totally solid. Let's get rid of that. That is a saucepan not to be eaten out of. That's had tons of fish guts boiled up to get oil out. So back in the Totally Awesome Workshop. Let's just... Get ourselves rigged up here and just I want to get about four along there just something to support the bowl <laughs> preferably not in reverse and with the hammer on going to go there and a piece of wood will stop that moving off just that little bowl goes in the bottom of the bowl there and I can balance it hopefully listen guys yeah another experiment coming just like this soup spoons as well gonna make up while that lead's melting some uh, wire loops all right all I want to do is make a loop a rolled small loop that I can put a clip or tie to like this that's going to go down into the bowl about there. So I'm guessing, it's all guessed them up. If I cut it off here, they could go anywhere. And did. Allow for the spoon being there. I can actually hopefully put just a slight curve to match the bowl. Like that. A little bit less. And then probably put a kink in it. So if I did want to cast it, which I won't, this is for place fishing, really. Decent pair of pliers, Graham. Using the long nose pliers and the curve, hopefully. If I twist it round the right way. I could just hold the pliers like that, rest it and let it set. Right, let's knock another three up. So being someone of only mild intelligence, I've got my gloves, I've got my loop there, and I'm going to do a pour and see what happens. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Phase one. Oh, I'm liking it already. I'm liking it already. Bit of overspill. It's so cold, I think I can let go of the, the unit there. Not worried about that because it won't stick to the wood. That's going off already. You can actually watch it congealing or setting as we speak. As are my fingers and toes because it's so cold. I'm going to have to get a bit more lead in there. I could I possibly try one in the, uh, in the teaspoon, tablespoon, soup spoon, whatever. Let's let that heat up a bit further. Here we go, we'll see if we can 
It's a bit fiddly. Set. I'm going to take this one out again in a minute and have a look at it, let it cool down. I'm going to get a little bit more lead on the go. All an experiment. And then I'm going to start on the fish oil. Keep your garage doors open. Always do lead melting in a ventilator. Vent Can I speak? I can't even speak and it's Friday. I haven't had a glass of wine yet. Always do lead melting in a well ventilated place. Check through all the health and safety whatevers that you need for lead melting. This is how I do my lead melting myself for my fishing leads on my boat. I think you got the gist of that one. I feel inclined to experiment with this chappy. That's come out okay. The spares, I can go back in and uh, this will be very hot. Get those back in there. Let's have a look. See, I think that shape is similar to those shellfish uh, ones I, I made, but much more neater because I can tap that round with a hammer and if you bump along the bottom it almost looks like a flatfish that's what I'm thinking that's why I'm doing this really for place fishing even though I'm stuck at home in lockdown amusing myself boiling up things in the garage stinking out the atmosphere with lead and fish guts and in, the, in, a, in a little while these trout pellets so we do a bit more lead melting that's obviously going to work this guy can pick up there just going to pick him up by the handle there. Be careful, out it comes. Shake straight out. A little bit of surplus there. I'm trying to do all this and film one handed people as you do. That goes back in. I suppose you could, you could put a lid on that if you wanted. I just like to leave it with a bit of air, like that. Again, just my way of doing it. Now that one's taken, but good job I put a curve in it, you see, in the wire two leads down how easy is this you just you just put them back in that depression there like that I oh, wonder how long before this one gets copied as well hello everybody how to make fishing leads with a teaspoon won't take long will it now here's a sensible one put that handle there close to the flame so it's really hot <laughs> I know it's really hot because I can see the burns so here we go with a second pour on this one, but I've made an adaptation. I've put the ring a lot higher up. I'll show you in a minute why. That looks like a better one. I'll put it just there. Let me show you. I've bent the eye right up here steeper a steeper angle if you look at the one i did earlier at a flat angle i've gone for a steeper one because i figure if we're fishing with a line up here that might make it kick up it might make it flutter more when i raise the rod top and lower it rather than just sliding through there it just might make it kick up a little bit more because place are very very inquisitive creatures the thing is it's, it's so cold here lead strips are congealing just on the, uh, the edge because the metal's not getting hot enough. I don't think I need four teaspoons. I could just knock them out one after the other. Look, I can use that one again and I'll get a good pour because I know that, that this here is hot. We used to do it years and years ago, sort of forgotten about it. Use it the best ones are big dessert spoons, the serving ones, you know, like a serving spoon you probably find these in um, charity shops and the like hopefully you're seeing this just release it slowly like that always oh, looks so lovely and shiny and sparkly and clean doesn't it again the emphasis is all moisture away from any lead melting whatsoever it goes off everywhere explosions look it up read it up if you're all nervous about lead melting please do read it up 
I just make my own leads like so many fishermen do. It's going sort of smoky, you can see a sort of smokiness of that, that's where it's going off because the temperature is so cold. There is indeed something quite satisfying about making your own fishing leads. Other fishing lead makers, melters, smelters, forge men, whatever you want to call yourselves, will say, will confirm, I dare say. That's it, glove on. The things we do to pass the time. I'm going to be very grateful if we ever get out when I do go place fishing and I can actually use these. Get in a little bit more. Give it a few seconds just to go and I can literally pick the next one up and just get that one. It's a bigger one, this one. There we go. I'm not worried about the overspill, it just goes on the wood. And I'll pick all that up and put it back in and get another melt out of it. Just let it go off. Fish oil on the go. I'm letting that one run over purposely because the actual piece of wire just popped up a little bit. There we go, all done. Put the surface surplus out there, that's how I do it. Rubbish, all that when it in there, when it's cooled off, I bang out. And then once I'm done with all this lead melting, I'll switch over and uh, get some water on the boil. Well, there we go, people. Just look. One, two, three, four. And this is all you do. One. That one fell out. Two. Three. Four. He says. Four. No marks on it. I'll be able to put it back in the wife's cutlery box. She'll never know the difference. That was a joke, that was a joke, they're my own spoons, people. Don't use your own spoons, otherwise somebody will be having a Christmas dinner with you once and go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice Christmas pudding, Mrs. Pudding. It's uh, got a bit of a tang to it. Right, I'm going to tap those up with a hammer, snip them up, tidy them up, and here I'm going to get the water on here boiling. So I'm figuring, having boiled guts up, I'm going to have to put water in there and then put a load of pellets in to just see what happens. I have no idea, people. I have absolutely no idea how much oil is in these pellets. They're oil-based, I guess. I think there's stuff like krill and who knows what else in there. And I'm going to be using... I'm going to be using the rainwater in there. Watch this. That is the rainwater melted. I figure that's enough. I don't, I don't honestly know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Well, do I ever? Pure rainwater, no chlorine in it, and then we're going to get some pellets in there. I'll use these for barbel fishing. Well, you can use them for all fishing, tench fishing, bream, they love them. I've called chub on them, but just occasional chub. To me, if I can ever get this undone, to me, these are good gold dust for barbel, tench, chub, all that sort of stuff. That's all I'm going to put in there. These are very, very dark pellets, these ones, look. They're very dark, can you see those in the light? So we're going to boil them up. Like this. Get that on the boil and see what the heck happens to them. Worst comes to the worst, if it's a total disaster and the oil doesn't come out of the pellets, I could put ground bait with that and make a paste of it. So. As the saying goes, double sweet. Let's get these leads sorted out. Well, there we go, people. I've used my tack hammer, rounded the edges, got rid of all the rough bits, and you can see perfectly sort of sp spoon-shaped. They're spoon-shaped. Lovely and smooth for bouncing along the bottom. And I figure with a phase two fully patented coat hanger wire bent upwards like that, like this one, see? I figure when you go to lift it, it's going to it's going to kick and flutter like this, you know. That's a theory, people. Listen, it's all an experiment. Well, it's not really an experiment. We did it years ago, but I thought it's worth showing you people again. And there you go. Tablespoons, soup spoons. If you want a bigger weight, get a serving spoon. Go around the charity shops, see what you can find. And there you go. I've got two, four, six, 
seven in a matter of 20 minutes. All free. And obviously the coat hanger wire is free. My wife's clothes are all on the floor in the wardrobe. Right, next job. Let's check out and see what's happening. Yes, I can smell it from here and the door's closed. Oh, it's either on fire or it's... Oh my God, it certainly smells of something. There we go, peeps. Boiling trout pellets. What is going to come out of those? I wonder. Let's just have a... Oh, pretty stodgy, pretty stodgy. I think I've got to put a bit more water with that. But only purified natural Hampshire water. Needs a lot more water, I feel. Because what's going to happen when I do it with fish guts? I've got my secret raptor oil, obviously I don't give away that recipe. But just regular fish oil, when I do that, I have it about half full. It reduces to nothing, the meat and guts. Then I leave the water overnight and the oil rises to the surface. I'm wondering if the same would happen here. In fact, let's get one of those teaspoons. It can double as a fishing weight mould and a disgusting trout pellet spoon stirrer. There we go. See what texture. I think we're going to need more. This is like soup. It's like a sort of broth. Because these are very, very hard, these pellets, so they're going to take some reducing. I'm going to let that boil again for a while, come to the boil, when I've toyed it up, put a bit more water, and I think I'm going to have to mash that with a stick and do quite a bit of boiling here. That's my, how hot have I got that? Ah, I turned it down, you stupid child, Graham. Smith, get onto Amazon, see if they can supply me a brain. What a stupid twit. Right, that's the wife's soup spoon. Look over here, you think it's not cold? No, no, it's not cold, Graham. That's why Graham's wrapped up. I absolutely hate the winter. I can only speak for it personally. I see absolutely no point in it. I don't know who invented it. Obviously the government or the utility companies. Yes, the utility companies invented winter so that they could charge us extra for heating and lighting. And another thing. Right, now we're on the go. What's all this summertime and wintertime business? Why can we not just have summertime all year round? Why do we have to be walking around in the dark at four o'clock in December? What's that all about? Anything else can I have moan about? Ah, I might also try, because these will dull down, they look nice and shiny like that, but they might need painting. You could do them in fluoro yellow, or you could do them in white. That's another plan, Graham. Another plan. Ah, ah, now this looks a bit more like it, people. That's what I would expect. A lot of extensive bubbling. That should pull out some oil, I feel. Let's stir the evil mixture. It's still pellet form, look at that. My God. Some tough old things, these are. Maybe they should be ground down, I don't know. What have I got in here that I can pound them with? Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. It's got a flat end to it. it. Might just help the oil to come out a bit more. I don't want to see any pellet at all, so I've got a feeling it's crush time. And of course, whatever's left, if I add in ground bait, it's going to be really good for fishing as a paste bait. They take some grinding up. I suppose. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. These clothes are going to smell nice. I suppose I could have ground it up in the wife's blender to save this. I don't think that would have gone down too well there, do you people? I just don't think that would have gone down well. Trout pellets in a blender. Listen, I know there's going to be comments that people have dried trout pellets in a blender. Probably match fishermen, I would guess, because they're always thinking of new ways of winning matches. Now, this has paid off because this has definitely gone a bit more soupified. <coughs> Bloody hell. It's following me around. Well, I don't understand this. It's not like the fish guts. This has been boiling for about 20 minutes. It's sticking to the bottom of the pan. Look, I've put more 
water in there because obviously it boils itself down but it doesn't seem like those pellets want to break up I mean they're obviously compressed when they're made for the trout farms and fish feed so how if I've been boiling this for 20 minutes how come the fish can get that dissolved with just a, a stomach acids I guess oh bloody I've got some stomach acids after this lot Give it another five minutes, boys, and we'll call that one quits. Otherwise, this costs £42.50 in gas. So I'm thinking, boys, about these place leads. I've done this with them. I've strung them out on some fishing line, knotting them individually. So they look just like washing line there. And then I'm going to use some white paint. And any drips, I've reversed the carpet, will go onto the carpet. Then when that sets, I'm going to try, and I think, either glue a bead on the top there, so it looks like a place, a mini place, either, you know, super glue or something like that, or paint a little eye on it. Obviously, as it bumps along the bottom, the white will come off, but it should just come off of this area, not the top. Right, let's get the paintbrush going. This might not end well. I don't know, guys. It's all another GP experiment in the cold weather. Oh, yeah, this... They're going to look better because they're going to go dull, you see. That's my that's my major concern. It's this way. At least it'll be light on the bottom. Because place of definitely visual feeders. And if the paint doesn't dry, with the temperatures being what they have been, there's a fair chance it will freeze. The, the problem I have is... Half the time they shut the marinas and say they won't open the marinas to the public. You have to be a member. I see, that probably means pay more money. Oh yes sir, yes sir, we can actually use the slip if you're paying an exorbitant membership fee. Rather than just daily. I've done it both ways. I've paid an annual fee and never got my money back, as it were. You know, never had enough trips in there. In other words, it's cost me more in the annual fee than the number of trips if I'd have done it daily. It's catch-22, guys, isn't it? And, and in fairness, it seems to be harder and harder to get fishing days out anyway, anyway. Just getting the right weather to go and enjoy it. And I'm not one to push the limit and chance things, definitely not. There's only one winner at sea. That's right, it is the sea. Right, let's do the other side. Now, this is quite strange, people, because if you look there, I've just come out from painting those leads, and they're starting to form look, a sort of skin on there. I don't know whether that's going to turn into oil or not. I've basically got to leave that to cool to the morning. Well, I'm back into uh, sub-zero temperatures. <laughs> I could put the blower on. Colin is up there on the tree. He's just up there. He's come down and he's had some lovely dry bread, which he didn't seem to savour too much. He likes meat. Anyway, the place leads are sort of dry, but because it's been so cold, they're tacky. I'm going to leave those at least another day. I don't want to take them inside because I think if I pick them up, it's going to go all over me and here well I'm not sure what we've got there what we're going to skim off but we're going to take a look at it it could get messy so as you can see I've got my leads here all painted that's the bulbous side so obviously I think that's going to lay on the uh, on the seabed first I'm going to put an eye on them but generally if you can imagine it's bumping along this way, it's going this direction, the boat's pulling it on the drift from that direction. I'll put the eye here. Now what I'm going to be using, I've got plenty of coloured beads here, look. No shortage of beads. But the problem being if I put the bead there, the swivel is going to stop it. So I'm going to reverse it and I'm going to put the beads right at the back. So I'm going to stick a bead, maybe a couple of beads on the back end of there using the old two-part epoxy of Aldite. I don't want to use the old Gorilla Glue because it's going to go, it expands and I'd have to trim it off. This way I think I can put a little dollop on there and fingers crossed it sticks. So I've mixed up 
my arrow dry, I'm just going to try and scoop off a couple of blobs, just like this. I'm going to make this a two-eyed one, and just get, I've only got five minute work time with these, hopefully I can, now we're going to go for a yellow one, and a sort of pinky one. Right, that's one done. You can get slower all night, it goes off a little bit longer, it gives you more chance to move things. I don't imagine anybody has anybody, anybody got leads with eye beads. I wonder. The two popular colours are black and green, just using them as ordinary. Uh, Attractors, I want to say, just attractors. They might catch on a bomb, they might come off. Does it matter? It's all fun. Well, there you go, it's a selection of place leads there. They're looking very attractive to me. You can see the size of my thumb now in relation to the lead. That'd be quite a heavy lead, that one. I'm going to let those set up. One thing I will have to do is maybe put a piece of cloth around each one Otherwise they're rattling around in a lead box, they're going to break off eventually. So I've got to try and store them individually for just a bit of tissue or something, or a bit of bit of cloth. Look, basically, I can't do it now, fold a piece of cloth over them, keep them in a separate tin. feeling this is going to be something of a failure uh, on the top is a skin so no oil there at all I'm just going down slowly I don't see any oil coming off of that but it is liquid so I'm going to figure if I can get this frozen down off oh, right at the bottom that's liquid on the top and then it's paste underneath so let me just stir this up a bit that's soften it I'm going to drain this and I'm going to freeze it and then put it into ground bait and freeze this other um, whatever gunk is left in the bottom of those pellets I'm going to freeze that separately from the water so put a piece of toweling down hopefully you guys will see this I'm going to pour it in here oh that is some lovely jubbly lovely jubbly but no oils come off that at all. Now, what I find strange, how do the trout that they feed these pellets on, how do they process this into oil? Why am I not getting oil out of it? I don't understand that. I was absolutely pretty well sure that I would get oil out of this. I've got a sort of soup. I'm going to call it like a broth. Pretty sure this is going to send them crackers, marlin, marlin fishing, marlin fishing, maybe marlin fishing would as well. I'm going to drip all that out there because there's a good bit of stodge in the bottom, which I feel is going to make paste. So this one, there people, I'm going to pop in the freezer and then when I want to use that as a ground bait additive, I can, I could even tip that in the margins on its own, I think it was sending bananas. And look, it's absolutely, it's like coffee for fish. But in here, say I've not, oh yeah, that, that, this I can tell you will make a pace. It's going to be messy, but that if I mix up, it's going to make a good paste. This is how we used to use it for tench and carp years and years ago. Or I did. It was then floating trout pellets. I think now they use a lot of sinking pellet now. 
Can our owners tell us which ones these are? I like how it's slightly dry to be honest. For the weather, you can see my pond out there is concrete. So the lake I want to try out is going to be concrete. Ah, oh, how do I get to my freezer? Oh, there's some goodies in here people. In we go. Gotta watch that it doesn't freeze up too much. It's starting to, it's starting to frost up there already. I need to go fishing. I need to badly go fishing to get some, rid of some of this. Just paying a fortune for bait, really, in a freezer. Right, let's risk it, boys. I'm going to put these into some balls. Just like this, look, you see it coming off. And when it starts to stick to my hand, I know it possibly either needs firming up or a bit more water. But these, I can freeze down literally like that thaw them out and work on them again. How amazing I didn't get. Really surprised I didn't get oil out of that. When you think of when I boil up the fish guts, oh my god, the oil I get when I boil the fish guts, the trout guts up and flesh, heads, whatever. It's strange that something happens in the process of the body of the trout that changes the, the oil in this pellet into the oil that I get out the other end of the fish flesh guts and that sort of thing which I use for shark fishing. So there we go, these can go in the freezers as well. Don't put them in one big clump because I might want to go and use that one on its own as a supplement, say, to maggots or worms just to try. So if you use one great big gob like that frozen down, it's obviously going to be thawed out and then you're going to want to use it. This way, if you keep them individually balled up like this and not frozen together, um, you can put them in newspaper or cling film, something like that, and then freeze them individually. Now it's got these wrapped up in quick cling film like this. Well they basically look like a little bombs and the reason I do that is when you freeze them side by side you can grab one and sort of snap it off when it freezes together. So those go in to the old war chest as well. There's a lot of bait in here that's going to catch fish hopefully. One last look at Colin up there. How he's surviving I don't know. Southeasterly wind blowing, something like five degrees below. It must be seven or eight with the wind chill factor on it. But he's he's loving it, loving it, loving it. I'm not. shows how amazing and low the levels of boredom come with this lockdown. I'm telling you guys, they will catch fish. I just need permission to get out there on the ocean. See you guys in the next episode.